All right, ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, we are going to extend and combine our discussion of exponents and roots from the previous three videos into one problem. This is not the final video in the series, but this is one where it's kind of bring it all together for us. All right, so what I'd like to do is take a look at the following fraction. We are given in the numerator the square root of 96 over the square root of 72. Okay, so we have to evaluate this, simplify it, work with it. We're going to be using several uh, things that we've learned about exponents and roots from previous videos. So if you haven't watched those already, please take a moment and go back to watch them. If you have watched those videos, you probably have some idea of what I'm about to do. First, let me demonstrate that neither of these numbers have perfect roots. Let me take here 96 and take the square root. Again, you see we have an irrational number, a number that never repeats. So 96 can't be found simply. And then 72 is the same way. Take 72, take the square root, and you get this irrational number. So if you're using a calculator, it can't help you with what we're about to do. That's why you've got to know how to break these things down. So let's start by breaking down 96 into its constituent prime numbers. So the, we know that 96 is divisible by 2 because it's even. So 2 is the first factor that we found. And now we have to say, well, how many times does 2 go into 96? If that's not something you know off the top of your head, and it's not something I know off the top of my head, a little quick long division will grant us the answer. Okay, so 2 goes into 9 four times. 4 times 2 is 8. 9 minus 8 is 1. Bring down the 6. 2 goes into 16 eight times. So 2 times 48 is 96. So the other factor is 48. 48 is not prime, so we'll split that again. 2 times 24. I think most of us could see that in our heads. 24 is not prime, so we split that again. 2 times 12. 12 is not prime, so we'll break it down further into 2 times 6. And one more time, 6 is 2 times 3. And that terminates it. See, there's no more splitting to be done, no more factoring to be done. So these are the prime factors of 96. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. Okay, we're almost done. Now we'll do the same thing for 72. And I might run out of room here, but we'll try. Here is 72. Okay, 72 is even. And we know it's not prime because it's even, so the first factor is 72. And again, we've got this problem. What is 72 divided by 2? Well, let's just do it. 72 divided by 2. 2 goes into 7 3 times. 3 times 2 is 6. 7 minus 6 is 1. Bring down the 2. 2 goes into 12 6 times. So 2 times 36 is 72. But 36 is not prime. So we break that down into 2 and 18. 18 is not prime. So that's broken down into 2 times 9. 9 is not prime, so we break that down into 3 times 3. So 72 is equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. At this point, we're going to rewrite, okay, rewrite these roots with, instead of the not big numbers, we're going to write them as the 
square roots of the products of their constituent prime numbers. So we'll do that here. Give us some working room. We're going to want to draw a big fraction bar here. And we'll take the root. This is why it's helpful to have a ruler, because you're going to be putting a lot of stuff underneath these roots. So on top, we're going to replace 96 with 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So far, I've got four of them. One more, times 2, and then times 3. Okay, 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 is 96. And so now, on the bottom, the denominator, we replace square root of 72 with the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 is 72. Okay, very, very good. Well, now it's time to do a little grouping, right? So what is it we want to do? We're taking the second root. Remember, both of these have an index value of 2. So we're taking the second root. So it's going to be advantageous for us to group these numbers in pairs. So we're going to group, use a different color. First, we're going to group the twos like this. Okay, and then we don't have any more pairs in the numerator. And then in the denominator, here's a pair. And then look, we have a pair of threes. Okay, this feels like a card game or, or some kind of something like that where we're, we're looking for numbers. Okay, so now we've grouped them. Well, so what? Well, let's rewrite these. Remember, these have, all these numbers have exponents of 1. 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And remember, we add exponents when we multiply them. So let's do a little, let's do a little strategic multiplication. We'll see what we get. We're going to rewrite both of these. So we need another big fraction bar. And the numerator will take the square root of, when we do this, we rewrite the base. So 2 to the first power times 2 to the first power is 2 to the second power. 2 squared. We do it again. Times 2 squared. That's this one. And now we got times 2 times 3. Times 2 times 3. And the bottom, the denominator, we've got two squared times two times three squared. Right? Uh, you might still be wondering how is that helpful to us? Because every time we find that we have a squared term underneath the square root symbol, when these exponents match the index values, we can kind of pull the number out of the square root. Okay, so I'm going to, first I'll break this square root up into pieces, and then we will simplify. So, one more time, we'll write this again. Big fraction bar. And now I'm going to group these in such a way like this. We'll take the square root of 2 squared times the square root of 2 squared times the square root of 2 times 3. Okay, so I've, I've kind of segregated these out so that the two squares are by themselves. Remember, Remember the index value is 2, 2, 2. Okay? Now let's do the denominator. We've got these two squares. We've got 2 squared and 3 squared. So I'll collective group these a little bit. The square root of 2 squared times the square root of 2, which is all by himself, times the square root of of 3 squared. Okay, we're almost done. This is where the fun part happens. We just got to remember that this index value is 2. And we've got to notice that we've got 
exponent of 2 and index value of 2, we can eliminate the square root entirely. Remember, in this example, we're only taking positive roots. We're not to negative roots yet, and we'll get to that when we'll cross that uh, bridge when we come to it. Okay, so now I just want to simplify these by getting rid of these square roots of squared terms. So in this case, this, the square root of 2 squared becomes 2. It just simplifies down to 2. Same thing here. The square root of 2 squared becomes 2. And then we leave this final square root of 2 times 3 just like that. Square root of 2 times 3. On the bottom, we'll do the same thing. Square root of 2 squared just becomes 2 at times the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 squared just becomes 3. Okay, so let's see what we've got. We have a 2 in the numerator and a 2 in the denominator. Those are the only common terms that we can pair up. Yes, we have a 2 here, but we don't have another 2 to pair it with. And then there's no square root of 2 times 3. And there's this 3 hanging out here, and there's a square root of 2 in the denominator. So these terms here cannot be simplified, but we can, we can get rid of, of these 2s. Remember, they have index values of 1. So we'll apply the quotient rule. Over here, I'll do it side, side work. 2 over 2. Okay, is equal, remember, they have exponents of 1. So that's equal to 2 to the 1 minus 1. That's the quotient rule. And that is equal to 2 to the 0th power. And using the 0 exponent rule, or the 0 power rule, 2 to the 0th power is 1. Okay, so that is a really fancy way of saying we cancel these terms right here. All right? But I want you to know what's actually going on. Remember, when it's actually variables, knowing these rules and doing all this little math right here is going to be important. So now let's see what we have left. Equals, okay, smaller fraction bar. We've simplified a lot. These terms are totally gone. So in the numerator, I've got 2 times. And what I can do here, this is interesting. So what I can do here is I can continue to break this frac this radical sign up. Okay, so I can break this square root up into the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. Okay, in the denominator, I have the square root of 2 times just 3 by itself. All right, so what do we have left? Notice we now have another pair. We've got a square root of 2 here and a square root of 2 here. We can do the same thing that we did with these values here using the quotient rule to kind of cancel them out. Let's see what that looks like. Over in the side work, we'll take the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. Okay, here's a way to think about this. You have the square root of 2 raised to the first power, like this. And so we'll actually be subtracting it's the square root of 2, okay, raised to the power of 1 minus 1, which is equal to the square root of 2 raised to the 0th power. The 0 product, the, the zero power rule, or the 0 exponent rule, tells us that anything raised to the power of 0 is just 1 which is a long-winded way of saying when you've got one thing stacked on top of the same thing, you can cancel it out, right? So it just evaluates down to 1, but we don't have to write the 1s, it's kind of pointless. Okay, so now let's see what we have as a final solution here. So on top, we've simplified this thing down pretty significantly to 2 times the square root of 3, and you don't have to write the times symbol, you just write 2 square root 3 over 3. Okay, so that is how that simplifies down. And it would be useful to show that that is, in fact, the same thing as the square root of 96 over the square root of 72. I wonder if I can show it on my phone.
just so you can see how it, it comes together here. So let me do it this way. First, let's take the square root of 96. So 96 square root. Okay, and we'll store that into memory. And then I'll take 72 square root. Okay, and that's 8.48. Okay, so what I want to do here is we'll do a little estimation. Okay, estimate down here in the bottom that the square root of 96 over the square root of 72 is approximately equal to okay the square root of 96 which was 9 approximately 9.79795 over the square root of 72, which was approximately 8.485281. And let's see what that equals. Okay, so we'll take 9. Point, let's do it here so you can see it. 9.79795. Divided by 8.48, oops, 8.485281. Okay, and that equals 1.1547. So approximately equal to 1.1547. So here's the moment of truth. Does this equal this? Well, let's see what this approximately equals. So we have approximately equals to 2 times, let's estimate the square root of 3. So we take 3, take the square root of it, and you get 1.73205. 1 1.73205 over 3. All right, so let's see what that comes to approximately. So now I want to take this, multiply it by 2, okay, and then divide that by 3. 1.1547, okay? Just a wonderful confirmation that what we're doing is actually correct and useful, okay? Notice that these approximations are identical, and that's because this is identical to this. The, the thing is, actually finding the exact, this is called the exact solution, exact solution is much more useful to us in mathematics than finding these decimals, which are approximate solutions. And that's what your calculator will give you. So the only way to get here from here is by going through these steps, okay? Now, this was a longish video because this was a rather involved problem, but this is kind of the meat and potatoes of what we're doing in here. So if, if kind of some of this kind of blew by you, I'd really like you to take a moment and re-watch this video. And if you need help, go back and watch, starting with the prime numbers video, all the way through to the present video in sequence, because they all build on one another. And... The goal is that we become so dexterous with prime numbers, so prime factoring, and we become very strategic about how we group pairs of numbers underneath radicals that we can actually get the numbers to kind of do what we want, right? And we end up finding this really cool simplified solution that the square root of 96 over the square root of 72 can be found to a perfect degree an exact degree using no calculator. Okay, we didn't need a calculator. And we see that this is far more accurate because this contains all the information, an infinite amount of information, where this approximated information is only useful so far as you can take these out to the decimal places. Okay? So, 
If this video was something that provided you some help and gave you a new way to look at mathematics, okay, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have a question or multiple questions, please leave those in the comments. I promise to answer them. If you have not already, please bookmark this channel and this playlist, okay? Subscribe to it and hit that notification bell so you are always updated and alerted when I release a new video. Thank you very much.